Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Stanley number 327 wardrobe pivot, uh, is what this is. The Stanley 327 is one of their collection of pivots available from Stanley. Uh, the 327 is quite typical and common when you're hanging full-size doors. And actually down below in the bottom of this extended description you will find those other pivots available from Stanley. The 327 is uh, very typical and common because it will work on doors of substance, thick heavy doors, up to 150 pounds. In and we see those installed on 6-8 doors, 7-0 doors, 8-foot doors, uh, again rated for 150 pounds. Um, and we'll get into the installation aspect of this pivot in a moment. But the other pivots to be mindful of are the Stanley 340, they have the 341, and then the 342. And they're just variations on these pivot sets um, that will serve different specific purposes that you might have. And those videos would be covered separately. Although a short overview would not be out of line, the 327 is going to be considered a heavy duty where you're going to get that weight rating because of the, uh, the thickness of the steel, uh, quite frankly, and the fact that it is an overlay sort of installation. And we're going to discuss that when we get to the um, installation instructions. The same version of this pivot is the 342, except that it is lighter duty, something that you're going to use on doors that are likely to be in the range of 80 pounds would be my guess. But that's primarily because you're dealing with doors for the 342 that are from inch and an eighth to inch and three eighths thick. So it's a thinner door. And when you are working with doors up to inch and three quarter thick, you'd be at the 327. Um, you're also going to have the 340, uh, which is a very good option for pivots. When you're dealing with inch and three eighths or inch and three um, inch and an eighth inch and three eighths thick doors, the reason I like the 340 is because they are uh, the bottom pivot sits on the floor, okay, and they are the type of installation that would be uh, more appropriate when you do not have a mullion that you're applying them to because the bottom pivot doesn't connect, uh, it, it secures itself to the floor. Although you need some sort of a stop at the header to make that work. Unless of course you were going to try to significantly modify that top pivot um, so as to cut the leg off that would otherwise mount to the stop and then drill and countersunk sink into the header of what you're installing. But be mindful that would be your dimensions would have to be quite exquisitely accurate for that sort of uh, Frankenstein preparation to work. Then you've got the 341 and that is nice because it will mount to the sidewall and is going to give you the top pivot that I've just mentioned uh, where it mounts only to the header. So perhaps familiarize yourself with all of the different pivots um, from Stanley before making that final decision. Now back to the 327 that we're working on. I have it here. It's available in different finishes. This is the prime coat finish. You're going to get in the box installation instructions, at least hopefully. I have an order of six of them here, but only five of them had installation instructions. Not that you need it six times, uh, but they're down, they're listed down below. You're going to get two of these, and they're identical because they are it is a non-handed pivot all together. Okay, so these two pieces are utterly identical. You'll get a package of screws as well. And let's get into a visual tour of what this pivot is. So this is meant to be, they call it an overlay because you're going to mount it directly to the face of your casework and the door and hardware will project off the face of the, um, of the wall. Now, I believe, in my experience, that is an atypical sort of installation. I see these installing to a jam strip that allows your installation to be flush within the opening so that your door is flush with the face of the wall. 
And once you're all said and done, you're not going to see a lot of this hardware at all, but just the amount that's in the front of my index finger. Okay. Uh, so if you add a jam strip to your opening, you can take that entire door, move it inside the opening, and flush it off to the face. And I've seen these installed um, quite recently, in fact, uh, with, tr with molding applied to the face of the wall, to the face of the door, making it all look consistent um, and making that door blend into the opening very well because that's really the purpose of using pivots a lot of the time. You don't want to see all the hardware. Now the downside with pivots like this, and these are called offset pivots, and that means uh, the vertical axis of pivoting okay, is offset as a butt hinge might be as well, versus a, it's offset in relationship to the door, whereas a center hung pivot, of which Stanley does not make any that I'm aware of, uh, would feature that vertical axis of pivoting down through the center of the door. So if you were installing the door over that axis of pivoting, that would be called center hung. And then you don't see any of the hardware, but then it complicates the installation rather substantially. So that may, center hung is usually not used um, because of its limitations when it comes to flushing a door off onto an opening. You have to uh, make, make uh, concessions in the door design for, for center hung hardware. This piece of pivot hardware is, and the other top and bottom pivot sets from uh, Stanley and others, uh, the, the, the downside of them is there's no provision for an intermediate pivot. So if you have a door that has some warp to it, and one or two out of ten do naturally have some warp, in my experience of having sold doors for several two-plus decades, manufacturing them literally um, tells me that that's about what you're faced with. So be mindful of the fact that if you have any warp in the door, you don't have an elegant way to contend with that warp when you're dealing with just top and bottom, top and bottom pivot sets. Okay. Now let's go over a summary of the uh, details of the 327 pivot. Available in different finishes as I had referred to uh, just previously, and let's go over what those finishes are. Certainly prime coat. I'm going to take a guess that we're dealing with prime coat, we are dealing with satin chrome, we're dealing with satin bronze, and then finally polished brass, and I'm going from memory. Oh, I was wrong. Not Strangely, not available in polished brass. The four proper finishes would be polished chrome, satin chrome, satin bronze, prime coat. Let's take a look at that a little bit closer because I do not believe it's not available in polished brass. The 327 is I'm pulling up the catalog. Oh, it is, oh of course it is. It, it's, it's not only available in polished brass, it's available in oil rubbed bronze as well. So a total of six finishes all on steel. Satin chrome, prime coat, polished brass, polished chrome, 10BL, and then US 10 for satin bronze. The 10BL, I'm thinking that that is going to be a powder coat type version. So Stanley indicates the 10B over steel is not covered under warranty. On a steel product, we suggest specifying a lacquered 10BL finish. So it'll be 10BL is going to be a finish that will obviously have a lacquer on it because that's what they just said, but it'll be a consistent sort of dark brown bronze color that will not be oily to the touch. Um, and that lacquer will, it will give you a piece of hardware that is quite dark uh, and be complementary to oil rub bronze, but ought to prove quite stable, whereas oil rub bronze is what is termed as a living finish. Now let's get into a visual and dimensional tour now, once, now that we've talked about finishes. So that's the business end of this pivot. Let's throw some dimensions around. And there is, below this video, a diagram showing what this, uh, what this pivot looks like dimensionally. A cut sheet, really, is what it's called. Let's do a reality check on these dimensions. They've got an overall height of the mullion side of 3 inch. 
They've got a width of that as inch and an eighth, but it's really closer to one and three sixteenths. Eh, inch and an eighth. Uh, width of the door plate on the back, they've got it at three inch. Two and a half inch is the dimension from the back side of the mullion portion to the, to the center line of the pivot. And I'm seeing that a little bit heavy. A little bit closer to 2 and 9 sixteenths in terms of those dimensions. And let's review that cut sheet for any additional dimensions that we've missed. Uh, you know, one inch and a half height on the back side of the door portion. That appears to be basically correct. And I do like to verify the dimensions because, you know, sometimes there's a small amount of variation. And that center line I'm not happy with in terms of their book showing two and a half. And it's, it's clearly greater than two and a half. It's clearly two and nine sixteenths. Does that matter? Um, yeah, it matters. Uh, yeah, you have to know that. You have to know exactly what that vertical axis of pivoting is. One dimension they don't give you is what's the pocket depth? How much room do you have to fit a door in there? And you can see your inch and three door, quarter door is going to come right on the inside of that button. Okay. Can you install a thinner door? Sure, you could. And in fact, if you were to install a thinner door, uh, you could expect, of course, this unit's ability to get around a wall condition better because you have, from the face of the mullion, if you're, if you're face mounting this, overlay mounting this, to the center line, whatever you put in there, when you open this up to 180 degrees, you're going to be picking up the clearance from here to the inside face of the door. Okay, so you could, if you had some heavy trim work applied to the face, like a chair rail over the entire door and frame, but you wanted those doors to go to 180 degrees, it would be important to know what you were dealing with in that regard. Now the balance of the extended description information is as follows. For overlay doors, an overlay specifically means that you're installing them and I'm just drawing this really quickly crudely actually an overlay installation is going to look like and they don't really show it in the installation instructions what an overlay but an overlay is basically like this where you would have a cabinet hardware type installation overlays mount the door is over the jam or the mullion is what they're calling it and again well they do show it forgive me the installation instructions clearly do show what an overlay looks like like I had drawn um, atypical again to see wardrobe doors installed this way and I never see them that way um, almost never okay the Ideal for wardrobe doors, sure, you're going to see pi these pivots installed in residential applications in uh, closets all the time. Not exclusively, but they are more residential in nature, I suppose. Or maybe it's perhaps the name Stanley is thought of more when it comes to residential applications for this type of pivot. But I've sold it, and in fact, this order is going to a commercial application. Uh, next bullet point is bearings take vertical and lateral loads. That's a reference to the high-tech piece of material that's stuck in there. Now what I don't like about this pivot at all is they want you to hold this off the floor, the bottom portion, a quarter inch. So literally the weight of the door and the hardware is all on the three screws that are back here. Okay, And the reason that's done is if you're going to mortise this flush to the bottom of the door you need to hold this up off the off the floor because the thickness of this is they say it's 0.200 the caliper says it's 0.190 I think let's take a look 0.196 
So that literally leaves you with 50 thousandths of an inch between where the bottom of the door will come uh, and what the floor would be, okay, if you're, if you're mortising that flush. Um, doesn't leave you much room at all. Meaning from here down to the bottom, there's not a lot of margin. Uh, I'm, uh, forgive me, I've said that basically backwards. They want you to hold that off the floor so that when you mortise this flush, your door is going to be flush with this situation, the bottom of the door plate, down to wherever you've held that off the floor. What I would do is I would certainly rest that on the floor. And I would either surface mount to this or I'd mortise it. And I think mortising it would be fine because if you see what I'm measuring there, I'm at 0.29 inch, 0.29 inch. So I would say almost 5 16 should be adequate. Now if that doesn't work for you, that meaning you have a carpet situation, well then you're going to have to hold that off the floor or you're going to have to build it off the floor, put something underneath it. And the reason I'm saying that is because the inherent advantage to pivots is that all the weight is borne on the floor, not on the hinges, not on the hardware itself. And that's the advantage of pivots. And that's why you can get pivots to hang doors that are well in excess of a thousand pounds because everything's on the ground. Everything's properly tied to the floor. So I would consider that, but the installation instructions are quite clear that you're to hold that off the floor. Uh, designed for mullion or face frame mounting, we talked about that. Right on or build yourself a mullion strip uh, so that you can recess the door flat. You might need a stop on the other side as well if you're going to do that. You will need a stop or a piece of hardware to contend with um, like a roller latch that you would install into the jam that would have an angle stop um, uh, provision. Doors can be installed floor to ceiling. Indeed, you can run this all the way up to the to the header or the ceiling if you're properly um, prepared for that. If the construction of the ceiling is adequate, I've had people really insist that they can just, I'm going to attach that right to the drywall. Uh, no, you're not. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, first of all, this pivot will not work for that. You need to have a mullion strip, but if you were to try to drill through that, you'd be looking at a different pivot anyway. Um, you need to have that mullion strip, but once you do, you can certainly run that all the way up to the header. Okay, And I don't see a reason why you couldn't double deep mortise the top of the door so that this portion is flush with the top of the door and have the door run you know, literally all the way up to the top of the hardware. That might be neat as well. Uh, screw holes allow for vertical and horiz horizontal adjustment. What they're talking about there is when you install this, you're going to hit these elong elongated holes first. You're going to make any adjustments to plumb everything, make sure nothing's towed in or out, and then tighten, and then use your fixed permanent holes when you're installing into the door. And, and those whole screws are included. They'll be in a complementary finish. And again, the 327 is non-handed. It can literally go... Uh, like I had said earlier, you're just going to flip it over is how you'll accomplish that. Okay. Now, let's get into, and the balance of this installation, uh, this video is, will be installation related. There is, there are a few links below this video. And there'll be installation instructions and currently two versions of it, which they're, they're the same version. One's just in multiple languages. Um, then there is a cut sheet, but that information's buried into the extended description anyway. Let's start at step one, and I'm looking at the multiple language uh, version of this. Step one tells us that the 327 can be installed in overlay applications and instructions given are for an overlay installation using this pivot. And I think that means if you're going to more, if you're going to mount this flush into an opening or a cased opening where it's flush, you're on your own because uh, they're showing you the overlay intended application. If you make a living installing hardware, you won't flinch at that at all. Uh, if you don't, uh, feel free to reach out to us once you have your pivots in your hand and we'll help you with that. 
non-handed and the installation instructions refer to a left hand installation if you're doing a right hand installation obviously just reverse everything that is all of step one now let's move to step two where they talk about they talk about the face of the mullion drawing your attention to that they're saying draw a line down that obviously that line's going to be plumb and that will be your reference point for where you are locating uh, locating your pivot sidewall of wardrobe or storage area mark vertical line vertical lines on the face of the mullion in order to horizontally position the mullion leaves mullion is just this stop strip or it's the piece that you're attaching to it probably better called the jam um, the horizontal the horizontal positioning will vary with the mullion width they want you to have an inch and a quarter mullion width with mullion leaves centered horizontally in the uh, in the if you've got an inch and a quarter mullion center this don't go any smaller than one and three sixteenths okay that's the minimum you're gonna achieve a reference point on your mullion where to locate the top and bottom pivots and that is well actually it's we're, we're, we should be looking at it for a left hand and that is all of step two step three now what they're saying is mortise the top and bottom of the door uh, for the hardware I had mentioned earlier this is about 196 thousandths thick so they're going to give you that three inch dimension they're going to want you to mortise it three quarter inch back and then inch and a quarter for the hardware to project off the face of the door uh, more, uh, so let's see uh, step three mortise is shown on top and bottom of the door if minimum vertical clearance is de is desired what they're saying is if the minimum vertical clearance is what you want mortise it just like this because it's going to take into account the door is going to be flush to this plate top and bottom note mortising may be eliminated if approximately one half inch clearance at the top and bottom is acceptable so you can literally set that right on top of there if having a half inch top and bottom from the top of the hardware or bottom of the hardware is what you have in mind that is all of step three now step four shows the unit as if it's opened at 180 degrees and your door is going to run in here that will allow you access to the backside and what they're saying is place door leaves in mortise mark and pre-drill at center of the elongated holes that will allow you that margin that we had talked about top and bottom step five that's all of step four step five to allow for vertical adjustment and sufficient clearance under the door the bottom mullion leaf should be mounted at least a quarter inch off the floor if carpet or other floor co coverings are used additional clearance should be allowed equal to their thickness so again hold this off a quarter inch off the floor mortising it flush is going to give you that standard clearance from the bottom of the door to that dimension which will be you know from here down a quarter inch plus the thickness of the plate to the bottom of the door if you've got shag carpeting you're going to add that to that dimension whatever you have whatever flooring condition you have add that does anyone have shag carpeting um, or make any modifications necessary speaking about this immediately we go to step six because step six basically says if you're installing this per the installation instructions a good double check is the net door height minus five and seven sixteenths should be the distance between this point and this point on the door um, if you've made any deviation anything that dimension is going to change but if you've you know a good way to double check that you're in good shape is that is that dimension that's step six step seven is attaching the rest of the hardware obviously this is a two-person job because if you're trying to wield a 130 pound door with hardware attached and get it centered in the opening properly plumb that's a two-person job step eight 
Make final door alignment if necessary. Move the door where you need it to, up and down or laterally. Then drill and secure through the permanent holes. At that point, you should be done with your installation. Additional hardware for this is obviously some sort of door pull that you might need. There are concealed versions. There are mortised flush versions. Um, the installation of these pivots is really just lim uh, limited to your imagination. Um, and sometimes it helps to have the hardware in your hand and then design around what the hardware can be capable of. Because I literally was in an installation, I was in a uh, banquet hall last weekend. No, 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 I was in a home last weekend. And they literally had 327s. They had them mortised inset, flush, inset to the opening. And had nice petite shoe, uh, uh, toe kick very small rail going across everything, very elegant. No, no, and yeah, and that's where it was. This home was literally built 100 years ago, so the hardware wasn't that old, but this house was over the last 97 years. Some of it was still quite original, the staircase, the balusters, um, the enormous dining room, the treatments in the ceiling, but some of the original elements remained. Um, even though the hardware had been upgraded. Um, and it was 327 hardware. Um, and they certainly, the point of that is they certainly didn't install these according to these installation instructions is the point. Finally, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Stanley products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. If you have any questions on the Stanley number 327, pivot set or any other Stanley product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.